Now, it has been praised by Prince Charles and public, publicly supported by many prominent British Asians. But an investigation by Channel 4 News reveals that amongst the beneficiaries of money raised by the aid organization Siwa International are Hindu extremists behind a campaign of violence in India. More than a thousand people, mostly Muslims, died in Gujarat this March. We show that money from unsuspecting donors in Britain ended up in the hands of the violent fundamentalists who incited the violence. Jonathan Miller has this report. Om Surya Namaha. Sunday morning in West London. These young Hindus are attending a local branch of the RSS, India's biggest Hindu nationalist group. Its British arm, the HSS, is a charity registered here for nearly 30 years. Every week across Britain, there are 72 meetings like this one. As most ethnic minority youngsters will tell you, um, it's important to know where you come from, who you are, uh, in order to in order to to face the rest of society. Um, that's, that's the way it is, and that, that's how HSS has helped me coming to Shaka uh, develop a sense, of, a sense of identity. But is the HSS really just a watered-down version of this? The headquarters of the RSS in India. Up to 60 British volunteers like Rahul come to India for training every year on funds raised by the HSS charity. Critics express concern about the organization's ideology. The RSS is like a fascist youth movement, like black shirts or something like that, uh, but perhaps uh, with deeper roots in black shirts because they have been, the RSS has been there now for nearly 75 years plus. In that time, the RSS has evolved a unique and some say potentially lethal philosophy. The core ideas of the RSS are based on an ideology called Hindutva or Hindu nationalism. Now this was an idea formed in the 1920s and at the root of it is the idea that India has to be an exclusive Hindu nation state in which minorities must demonstrate unconditional love and obedience or obedience to the nation. If they don't, then they're to be um, either um, converted forcibly or, or removed. Um, so, for example, one popular Hindutva slogan is that Muslims in India have only two places, uh, Pakistan or Kabristan, Kabristan meaning the graveyard. In March, the burning alive of 58 Hindu pilgrims by a Muslim mob in Gujarat enraged Hindu nationalists. It boils up my blood. Hindus in India have gone through a period of very humiliating subjugation for past 700 years. We are prepared to forgive for that. We cannot forget it. The Hindu nationalist backlash was immediate. In the Indian state of Gujarat, more than 2,000 Muslims were killed and several hundred thousand displaced in the worst communal disturbance since partition. Several inquiries, including one by the British High Commission, saw the hand of the RSS and its associated organizations behind the violence. Back in Britain, Channel 4 News has learned how Special Branch responded to the Gujarat violence. They started a watching brief on the HSS. In addition, the Charity Commission was alerted to allegations that money raised for the HSS in Britain might fund communal violence in India. In September, they announced a formal investigation into the Leicester-based charity. This is focusing on Seva International, the HSS's welfare and relief arm, which raises millions for Indian emergencies and development. Our concern is to make sure that any charity um, directs its funds properly to that charitable cause, to the good cause it exists to promote, and to make sure that they're not misleading donors uh, during the process. So we want to make sure that there's a very clear line between the money that's given here in the UK in this case and the needy people um, in very urgent need of assistance and help in Gujarat. For three months, Channel 4 News has been investigating the activities of the HSS, how they raise money and what they do with it. A powerful, destructive earthquake caused one of the biggest catastrophes in history. In the Indian this appeal for earthquake victims in Gujarat last year raised more than £4 million and could hardly have been more high profile. 
It earned the praise of the Prince of Wales, whose office wrote that the Prince continues to be most impressed by the excellent work being done by Saver International. Saver recruited four peers as patrons, including President of the Liberal Democrat Party Lord Delacchia, and Cabinet Minister Paul Boateng attended a fundraising event. Please send your donations. Many donors are unaware that Saver International is part of the HSS. That's because Seva is not actually registered as a charity. It simply borrows the HSS charity registration number. Among those who now feel deceived is Lord Adam Patel of Blackburn, one of the patrons in its earthquake appeal. Well, I was absolutely shocked. Absolutely shocked. They were involved directly or indirectly in many, many communal riots. They were involved in destroying the Ayutthaya Mosque. So I said, what's going on? Have I landed my name to the wrong organization? It does seem that the organization, for all its links with the HSS, the RS, uh, RSS, does indeed do good work. Well, I have never ever been to the Gujarat. And if they did, you know, some good work, yes, uh, I congratulate them. But their association, with you know, these sort of organizations. I don't approve it. In August, Lord Patel wrote a letter demanding details of Seva International's links to Hindu nationalist groups in India. When he did not receive answers, he resigned. So just what is the money raised by Seva used for in India? And what is its connection with Seva's parent organization, the HSS, and the extremist activities of the RSS in India? I've logged on to the Saver International website here, where you can donate money online by credit card. Unless you specify a particular cause, Saver will pass your money on to any one of a whole host of projects they support in India, no doubt many of them good works. Among the highest profile of these here is the Kalyan Ashram, a project designed to help the poorest of the poor in India, the tribal people. The Indian Project website says it's dedicated to weaning the tribal people away from what it calls the evil influence of foreign missionaries. We heard about a campaign by Kalyan Ashram to convert thousands of tribal people to Hinduism in Gujarat. The conversion campaign started in 1997, the year in which accounts filed with the Charity Commission show Seva International began funding Kalyan Ashram. The activities led to systematic violence, for example, uh, the attack on churches, um, the burning down of churches in, uh, towards the end of 1998 and in 1999, increased violence and hostility towards the Christian population within Gujarat. When we asked the HSS about this, they provided a statement from Kalyan Ashram in Gujarat, which said, Kalyan Ashram has never destroyed any places of worship. But we wanted to find out whether money given by British donors to Seva International, apparently to help the poor in India, could actually end up funding sectarian violence there. We sent a team to Gujarat to find out. There we heard allegations that sectarian violence by Kalyan Ashram was still going on. The team went to the Baroda region of Gujarat, scene of some of the worst violence against Muslims earlier this year. 56 people were killed here in just a few days, hundreds more injured, 29 mosques were destroyed, thousands were driven from their homes. In village after village, we spoke to several victims who blamed the violence on Kalyan Ashram. One of them was Muhammad Haji. We had to run away from our village. This is our house which they burnt. They looted our property. About 150 homes were destroyed here. And this is our mosque, which they burnt down. We had no fight, quarrel, problem of any sort with the tribals. We used to live peacefully with them. That night, a Hindu activist close to Kalyan Ashram told us the inside story of the organization Seva International funds from Britain. We've had to protect his identity. He told us the local Kalyan Ashram boss had orchestrated the attacks in Muhammad Haji's area. 
He threatened the villagers, saying that if they didn't join in provoking the Muslims and burning them, they would also be treated like Muslims and burnt. And he said, the government is on our side, nothing will happen to you. So the Kalyan Ashram activists gave the villagers bows and arrows and revolvers and such arms. When our team went to the Ashram boss's home village, his family said he was on the run from the police. The police accused him of leading a mob of 2,000 tribal people in another big attack. And in a chilling aside, a local Hindu activist told of Kalyan Ashram's plans for yet more violence. The Christians have made a church in our village. We have thought several times of destroying it. One day, we'll definitely break it down. Retired Indian Supreme Court judge P.B. Savant has spent months hearing evidence for an independent tribunal on the Gujarat violence. He has no doubts about Kalyan Ashram's role. The organization called Vanwashi Kalyan Ashram, through which the tribals are being indoctrinated into communal philosophy, was roped in. And all those who are trained there were also enrolled for violence. The president of Kalyan Ashram in Gujarat denied his organization was involved in violence. He also denied any dealings with the HSS and even, at first, with Saver International. You didn't have, um, I mean, uh, help from Saver International? Saver International, no. Because they list them, you as one of the projects which they sponsor. Some students, some they, are, they were providing assistance and scholarships to students, school fees. Now, there might be some tribal students who might be receiving from Seva International. It turns out Dr. Shah's missing worker in Baroda, accused of leading the violence there, was in charge of tribal students, the work that Dr. Shah suggests is funded by Seva International. Justice Savant is adamant that overseas funding like that from Seva International is fueling sectarian violence in India and that there must be greater scrutiny. The communal violence that erupted there, as well as the communal indoctrination which has been going on, all these activities were being funded by this money, which came from Seva International. They believe that the money is going for the welfare and rural development. But that is not so. It may be a part of the activities, but much of it goes for this communal indoctrination. Back in Britain, Channel 4 News spoke to a number of donors to Seva International who were surprised by its links to violence. A Bradford businessman who gave £7,000. With that knowledge, there's no way one would have actually contributed anything at all. We are not uh, allied to or uh, affiliated to or support any extremist organisation of any sort. A Wellingborough councillor who helped raise £30,000. Money was raised by schools, um, by other fundraising activities. Um, I don't think people would have given money knowing that the money was going to uh, the RSS in India. But in Leicester, the HSS National Secretary says the charity can't be held to account for what happens in India. We totally condemn any violence or any intimidation or uh, any course of coercion that would have taken place on any human being, wherever he is. I totally condemn it. We raise funds in this country in total good faith and uh, hand over to the connected parties, not only in India, but for other purposes as well. And once the, once, the, once the funds are given away, it's not always physically, humanly possible to keep a track. The HSS.